I use Opus Plan. This is literally like secret stuff here. Boris Cherny, he invented Claude Code. And I, I just wanted to say that although he invented Claude Code, Claude Code would not be what it is if it wasn't for the team around him. So this is not to necessarily say that they are the, you know, what they say goes, but there's absolutely something you'll probably learn from this. And you might learn a thing or two as will I just kind of going through this. So he runs five Claude's in parallel in his terminal. I number my tabs one to five and use system notifications to know when Claude code is input. So I'm guessing work trees play a big part to be able to do this, unless he's using different Git repos for, you know, they're called, but I guess this is building Claude code. So I'm get. I reckon this is work tree. So I have, I have a video on work trees on my own channel. If you want to go check that out, but it allows you to run different Claude code um, instances or working on different features. So yeah, my experience in this, it can get very confusing because you think, fuck, where was I? What was I doing in that one tab? What, what, you know, where was five is, quite a lot. I struggled with three, put it that way. I also run five to 10 Claude's uh, on Claude.co. So that is Claude for web. You can also achieve this with the desktop app. It looks and behaves exactly the same. This is a really nice way to like just send off something and it, it creates a pull request on, on your GitHub repo. You don't need to run it locally. Um, as I code in my terminal, I'll often hand off local sessions to web using at, which is something you literally type at and then it will send it off to the web, which is quite cool. Or manual kickoff sessions in Chrome. Sometimes it will teleport back and forth. So basically he's got up to 15 tasks running in parallel, which is quite mental. Mm -hmm. I use Claude, uh, I use Opus 4.5 with thinking for everything. It's the best coding model I've ever used. And even though it's bigger and slower than Sonnet, since you have the steer less, uh, it less and it's better tool it is almost always faster than using a smaller model in the end. Now, he obviously works for Anthropic. He probably has free use, infinite use of Opus 4.5. This is not practical, but what I do find quite interesting, he's got thinking on for everything. Now you can enable thinking with um, uh, option or alt T and you can turn enable thinking on. I'm in an open question at the moment. What is the difference between thinking and planning? Because you're not doing any, both are not doing any code. Thinking tends to think before it implements all in the one like uh, shot, whereas planning gives you the opportunity to, you know, thumb up or thumb down. Something I'm discovering, but it is just interesting that he's just got thinking on for everything. Again, he works for Anthropic. This is probably very uh, unachievable by normal people. Our team share a single Claude MD file for the Claude code repo. We check into Git and the whole team contributes multiple times a week. Anytime we see Claude do something incorrectly, we add it. So they're actively contributing to this Claude MD file, um, which is, you know, I think we all should all be doing this. Like you're, it's not going to work because it will be unique to your way of working. It will be unique to your team's way of working, but it could also be unique to your, um, the way that you use Claude code. You know, you might, you might prompt it in such a way where it always does, uh, what have you got here? Um, you know, it always uses NPM because of the way you write code. It's a stupid example, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. your experience with Claw codes can be very different to another person. So your rules are going to be Interesting, very yeah. Unique. During a code review, I'll often tag at Claude on my coworkers PRs to add something to the Claude MD as part of the PR. We use the Claude code GitHub action, which you can install using slash whatever. Um, for this, it's our version of Dan Shipper's compounding engineering. I think he's basically just encouraging number four here. Most sessions start in plan mode. There you go. If my goal is to write a pull request, I will use plan mode and go back and forth with Claude until it's, uh, I like its plan. From there, I switch into auto accept mode and Claude can usually one shot it. Again, he's probably using Opus, but I use Opus plan, which is a hidden model. You type slash model and then type Opus plan and it will unlock. This is literally like secret stuff here. It will unlock. Whenever you're in plan mode, it will go to Opus and then it will switch to implementation mode and automatically switch to Sonnet to actually implement that stuff. He's rich, he can do Opus all the way, but that might be a more cost-effective way to, to do this. I use slash commands for every inner loop workflow that I end up doing many times a day. This saves me from repeating prompting and makes it that Claude can use these workflows too. Commands are checked into Git and live in Claude commands. I use 
commit push PR slash command dozens of times a day, the command uses inline bash to pre-compute and a few other pieces of info to make the command run quickly and avoid back and forth with the model. I'm not quite sure on that one. Let me know if you if you understand that. I use a few sub agents regularly. Code Simplifier simplifies the code after Claude is done working. Verify app has detailed instructions for testing Claude code end to end and so on. Similar to slash commands, I think of sub agents as automating the most common workflows that I do. So he's a big sub agent user on Cool Guide. We use post tool hook to, oh, I really want to get into hooks. Post tool hook to format Claude code's tool. Claude usually generates well formatted code out of the box and the hook handles the last 10% to avoid formatting errors. Okay, so it just runs format basically. Um, I don't use dangerously skip permissions. Instead, I use permissions to pre allow common bash commands that I know are safe in my environment to avoid unnecessary permission prompts. Most of these are checked into Claude. So, okay, so yeah. Um, you can basically set a bunch of uh, permissions that it's allowed to run. Instead of giving it, basically, you can just do anything. He's mm -hmm. being a bit more controlled about what it can run while it's doing its thing. Um, Claw Code uses all my tools for me. It often searches and posts to Slack via the MCP server, runs BigQuery commands to answer analytic questions using B, Big BQCLI, don't know what that is. Grabs error logs from Sentry. Uh, the Slack MCP configuration is checked into our MCP JSON and shared with the team. I think he's basically saying that he just does everything from Slack, uh, Claw Code, I think via MCP. For very long running tasks, I will either A, prompt Claude to verify its work with a background task when it's done. This is something I want to talk about. Use an agent stop hook to do that more deterministically or use the Ralph Wiggum plugin, uh, originally dreamt up by jo Jeffrey Hunt Huntley. I will use either permission mode, don't ask, or well, he just said he doesn't use that in a sandbox to avoid permission prompts in a session so Claude can cook without being blocked by me. You kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier, this idea of I think what will be more common is kind of what uh, PewDiePie built, mm -hmm. where you've got a council of agents all verifying each other's work. I think this might be what he's kind of doing here, like creating a sub agent to verify others' work. But not to 100% sure. I ask my AI, like I always uh, give it, like I ask it to rate the code. And sometimes I do it like manually with other AI. And what I've recently started doing is I find like either open sources, like, yeah, I find code that I think uh, would make sense to kind of like um, compare it to. So I say like compare this what you created with this and then write it. And then uh, I also started doing like doing that and putting the end results in an MD file for either for AI to learn or for myself, maybe, maybe both of us. Like, so they learn from the, the code that they did or sometimes, you know, when you get an error or like you get a bug or something or something doesn't work out and then you continue prompting until you get it fixed. Uh, I say everything that you learned through the, like this back and forth, documented in an MD file. Why was it so, and how is that that it's it worked? Uh, so I do try to gather these either for myself to learn from, or you know I could feed it back to uh, AI in another session if I have something similar. I don't know if you've heard of Ralph Wiggum. It's doing a lot of rounds at the moment, but it was um, it's basically a task that runs infinitely until the job is done. So, mm -hmm. uh, and it feeds the result back in. It's just an infinite loop, basically. You can set up max iterations, but uh, iterations. But if you look at cold code, look at plugins, the plugin directory, you'll see Ralph Wiggum. Um, I made mm -hmm. a short about it actually, but um, yeah, it's becoming more popular in, like in the last week. So final tip, probably the most important thing to get great results out of Claude code, give Claude a way to verify its work. As you were just saying, if Claude has that feedback loop, it'll be two to three uh, times the quality of the final result. So there we go. Again, everyone's going to have their own ways of doing things. Everyone's going to enjoy different ways of working that might not work for you, but certainly works for them. 
can't argue with it. I wish I could, you know, obviously literally just show you. And I mean, I probably could, but it would just make this section like 10 times more yeah. uh, longer if I'm there showing you exactly how to do it. But I hope that's interesting. That That's the idea for the comment section. Like, just let us know if you would be interested in that. This is part of a larger conversation on my show, Command AI, which we stream live every single week. We discuss the news and all things related to AI in the world of design and web. Catch us next week and join in the banter.